need any of this stuff. I don't need this or this or this. I just need this and this coaster. And that's all I need. I don't need this. I need this coaster and this boom box and this basket. This coaster, this boom box, and this basket, and this sombrero, and this Kleenex. That's all I need! I just need this bean bag, this basket, and this boom box. I need this basket. I don't need a boat. I don't need a chart plotter. I don't need a dinghy. I don't need a water maker. All I need is this boom box, and this basket, and this Kleenex, and this bean bag. That's all I need. I don't need a boat. I don't need a dinghy. I don't need a chart plotter. I don't need a water maker. This coaster, this boom box, and this basket. And this Kleenex and this basket. And I don't need anything else. Nothing else. I don't even need a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Steve Martin would be, he'd be embarrassed watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first movie I ever went to in the theater. The Jerk? Yes, my mom. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Talk about a movie that you couldn't make today. I want to watch that again. <laughs> So good. <laughs> so what have we been doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, the immortal words of Jerry Seinfeld. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not true. We've been betting a lot. We've been uh, gambling with each other. You know, kangaroo fights. Uh, pool. I think I'm way ahead in the pool game. <laughs> yes! Who can meditate the longest? Who can hold their breath the longest in the pool? Of course, there's some real meat to this Q&A session. First big question I think we've had in the YouTube channel over and over again is, did you guys buy the boat? Is the deal done? What's the final verdict there? It is dead. Yeah. No more. No deal. So that's really been really hard. And I know we put on a happy face, but just so you know, we are very disappointed in that. Yeah, super disappointed. I mean, we make videos about sailing for a living and wow, we sure built that one up uh, and it, it fell flat on its face. We want to answer more questions that we've been getting a lot recently, um, which is, hey, now that you know what you know about buying a boat, do you regret selling Clarity? Do we regret selling Clarity? Clarity was our Leopard 46 that we sold uh, what was it last April or May? Nine months ago. Nine months ago. Uh, man, regret, it, you don't want to go down that road. Regret yeah. is, is not something you want to play with because that can just, that can suck you in and eat away at you. Um, so I don't know, why don't you answer that first? I feel like in general, I don't regret big decisions in my life because of what they lead to and the good things that come from any big decision, which is the case with selling clarity. I do regret small things that happened in the past, like don't try to carry two bowls of water <laughs> while going downstairs. I regret that. Yeah. But uh, selling clarity, I don't regret it. Um, that's how Megan broke her foot. Uh, was carrying a bowl of water down the steps. Yeah, yeah, it's a painful lesson, I guess you could say. I, I would say that um, I don't regret selling Clarity, though I do, I do miss Clarity. <laughs> I do miss Clarity. I miss sailing uh, so much. I miss having a home. Uh, yeah, <laughs> having a home base, and, and Clarity was that yeah. for us. We had her for five and a half years, and she was our home, and it was a hard decision. Yeah, it was uh, you know, something we went back and forth on for a month or maybe even longer. And at that point, we had decided, you know, let's move to something more purpose-built for doing some, some major ocean miles. Mm -hmm. And in our minds, that was something more performance-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what we did is we underestimated 
how few of those boats were actually available. Mm -hmm. And that other people were <laughs> also having that same feeling. I, I don't want a production boat anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to go to something more performance oriented. So the market has been for the last eight or nine months, very, very tight. So knowing now, or if I knew then what I know now, I think I would have held on to clarity while we really locked down the next boat. But at the time, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah, and that gets into personal finances and making decisions based on being able to act quickly. Because if you find a boat, you want to be able to have the cash to go. So these are tough times and it's challenging to know when to sell and when to buy. That leads into another question that we've been asked broadly, and that is what's going on in the catamaran market? A couple months ago, made a video about the impacts of changing macro macroeconomics on the boating industry, the boat building industry, the resale side of things. And uh, I think we're now seeing clear evidence that yes, the market is absolutely positively softening. I would say like the housing market, inventory is still low. Yeah, but we are seeing significant price reductions. Boats that owners thought they would get a, a really high price for, they're starting to come down to reality because the phone is not ringing. So we're seeing a lot of boats just sitting on the market uh, that are frankly overpriced. If they got more realistic, brought prices down to where they were a couple of years ago, the boats would probably sell. And I think that gets into an interesting question about timing because people who have this asset think, hey, I don't have to sell it. I could just hold on to it since it's so valuable. <laughs> yeah. And, but hey, if you want to offer me top, top dollar, then I'll think about it. Yeah. So we've seen a couple of those situations where uh, these are boats we're interested in. And if the price was fair, we would move on to it, but the sellers are, are asking astronomical numbers that we think they will absolutely never get. So being as big an investment as this is, we think it makes a lot more sense to cool our jets, take our time, and continue to see the prices soften. Another question we get often is, why not just buy new? <laughs> hey, where is that money tree? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is it under here? There's a couple reasons for that as well. The new builds have gone up in price because of inflation. And um, well, they're just, they're frankly out of reach for us. We're actually fairly conservative financially, and we are not comfortable buying a brand new asset in, let's just say, uh, potentially very turbulent economic times. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense for us to go absolutely all in or go into debt for an asset that, uh, well, could be a little hard to liquidate in a couple of years. It's also interesting because there was a boat that required a loan recently and I called a broker and he said, oh wait, you want to circumnavigate? We can't give you a loan. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not as easy as it sounds. Lending standards have really tightened up where banks were just giving away cash uh, even a year ago. It's not that way anymore. Interest rates are high and the lending standards are high as well. So. Yeah, we're going to stay in our lane price-wise and, I guess, wait for the right deal. Yep. Let's just say we had all the money in the world to buy a new build, then we'd still have to wait two or three years. <laughs> or would we? It's kind of interesting. I don't want to pick anybody out in particular, but a brand that you probably know very well, a new boat build, they have been quoting customers, ah, oh, it's going to take two, three years to get your boat. Well, now these boats are available within a couple of months. So yes, people are dropping out of their new build slots. I wouldn't say it's a tidal wave. I wouldn't say that it's a market crash, but yes, the market is definitely changing, definitely softening, even for the new builds. We get this comment frequently, probably from the same person. <laughs> Let's just answer it. <laughs> what about the Mumby 48? Come the on, Mumbi Nick. 48. Why don't you want the Mumby 48? You know, I'm, I'm not opposed to the Mumby 48 from everything that I've seen. It, it, the numbers look great. If you're not familiar, this is an aluminum build catamaran. And they're all, uh, they're all one-offs. They're built from the Mumby plans. And then individual builders kind of make them their own with some, uh, some re-engineering here or there. 
I'd say there's a couple problems with them. First of all, finding the value on those boats is extraordinarily difficult. We had a gentleman offer his boat for a million dollars, a Mumby 48 build for a million dollars, where we know that these can be built uh, in the Philippines on the mat on the order of you know two hundred thousand dollars. So is his boat worth a million dollars? Maybe, but even if we paid half that. We go to sell it in a few years and it's really hard to figure out what that boat's worth. A boat is only ever worth what somebody's gonna pay for it. That's true. The La Rouge, the Barramundi, um, you know. What's that Mars, Marston or whatever? The Marsden, Marsden. composites. <laughs> a beautiful boats, fantastic builds, but headroom is mm. absolutely an issue. I'm 6'2 and Chin finding, Kagan. yeah, finding a boat that I can actually fit into is, yeah. is difficult. Yeah. So for those shorter people out there, you got a leg up. Yeah. But don't bum. <laughs> All right. What other questions? Someone says, hey, why don't you guys, since this is your business, just go buy something that will make do. It's maybe a monohull or just something a lot smaller and cheaper just to get you out there. And I did say to Nick the other day, all right, let's just go get a monohull. <laughs> and then we can buy some property somewhere else and we could do the... You know, part time on land, part time on the water. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it's completely out of the question. I think the problem is that I get a boat and I want to, I want to trick it out. I want to make it the best possible boat that I that I can. And for me, it's very hard to go into a compromised situation knowing, listen, I'm not going to keep this boat. I'm going to have it for a year or two while I look for uh, the real boat that I'm interested in. And then I'll always be trying to improve this boat that I'm just going to end up getting rid of anyway. So not completely out of the question, but it seems like the long way around. So what are we doing? What are we really doing? All right. Well, <laughs> first of all, it, we looked at the weather in Portland, Oregon, and it's rainy and cold. So we're here in Australia. <laughs> yeah, we do have to leave. In fact, by the time you watch this, we're probably not even in Australia anymore. Not sure exactly where we are. We'll report from there when we get there. Uh, but what have we been doing productively with our time? First of all, we've been trying to just chill out. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have been doing a lot of meditation. Mm -hmm. Working out, swimming. There's a gym in the basement. We've also been doing a little bit of trading. Yeah, the markets being what they are right now, a lot of fluctuation means that you can make money, whether the market's going up or down. Some of you may know that I wrote a book called Live on the Margin. So I've got a little experience in this area. Uh, so yeah, the time not spent making videos has been spent making money in other ways. And also looking for a boat. Yeah. We have a couple uh, in our sights and we are definitely not going to be sharing the process in real time, unfortunately. Yeah. We're so. completely done with that. Yep. It has bit us too many times sharing the process of looking for the boat because, you know, everybody gets their hopes up and then it doesn't go right and everybody's disappointed and wants to know all the details, mm -hmm. which we would love to share, but it's not necessarily... Uh, something that we can do. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the boat buying process, we would love to talk more about that. I think what we'll do is we'll release an episode coming up that gives general advice, mm. general topics for discussion if you are out there looking for a boat mm -hmm. that isn't specific to any transaction that we have been involved in. Mm -hmm. That's right. We've learned a lot, we just can't get real specific. Exactly, and so we do feel like we're, we're trying to practice being grateful for everything we have and all the learning experiences, the relationships we've made along the way, and also being hopeful that if we just keep moving forward with uh, openness and positivity, that the right boat is destined to uh, land on our lap. Thank you all so much for sharing your valuable time with us. I know this isn't a super exciting video, but this is where we're at and we love all your questions and all your support. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.